Jennifer Miller's life was challenging and unpredictable from the beginning. After the girl's mother died of complications from pneumonia when Jennifer was only five years old, she had to live with her alcoholic stepfather for about two years. Unfortunately, the man never cared for the girl. It's hard to say what the girl's life would have been like had it not been for the neighbors who called social services. Needless to say, the frightened child caused quite a stir among the social workers. She had the look of a cornered animal caught in a trap. Meanwhile, Jennifer's stepfather was so drunk that he couldn't even talk to the social workers when they asked him to explain why the house was so messy. Instead, the man swatted them away like some annoying fleas and went into another room, shaking his head. Thus, the behavior of their irresponsible alcoholic sealed Jennifer's fate for the next few years, forcing her to live in an orphanage. Naturally, it was tough for the girl to adjust to living in that unfamiliar and violent world, but then, thanks to the skilled help of the staff, little Jennifer began to feel she was part of a big family. Time passed quickly at the orphanage, and Jennifer had become a young adult before she knew it. Saying goodbye to her beloved caregivers, the young girl entered a new adult world where she had to find her place. Luckily, the Orphan Relief Fund placed Jennifer in a small house on the outskirts of town. Unfortunately, the neighborhood where she ended up living could hardly be called safe, but the young woman had no choice. So she humbly accepted whatever fate threw at her. With her own home, she could finally start looking for a job. Unfortunately, it was much more complicated than the young woman had anticipated, as she needed to gain experience and specific skills. Going from office to office, Jennifer was rejected several times, and just when she was feeling desperate, luck smiled on her. It came from a gas station owner, Alfred Patterson. Yes, I'm looking for help, and a young lady as beautiful as you would be perfect for the job, the gas station owner said with a mischievous smile. Thank you, sir. I'd be very grateful for any job, Jennifer replied. The girl felt as if she was being watched from head to toe. Alfred Patterson was a middle-aged man who never missed an opportunity with a woman and prided himself on having broken at least a few dozen women's hearts. Therefore, when a womanizer saw Jennifer in his office, he knew that the interview was just a formality. He was surely going to hire the beautiful woman and had ulterior motives behind the decision. But the unsuspecting Jennifer was thrilled to get the job at the gas station, which seemed like the best place in the world to her and the other young women working there. Beth, Sally, and Rose, cashiers who worked at the gas station, had been friends since school. The friends liked Jennifer and were happy to accept a new employee into their friendship circle, a very united group. Occasionally, they would scam their customers when they filled up their cars, and because of this, they always had some extra money in their pockets. One day, Sally even asked Jennifer to join the scam, but the orphan rejected the offer. Well, that's too bad. After all, the customers don't even notice, and you would make a few extra dollars. I'm sure you could put the money to good use, said a disappointed Sally. Jennifer just smiled shyly in response and shrugged her shoulders. Although she had grown up without parents, the thought of stealing and cheating from customers made her uncomfortable. Besides, Jennifer was used to living modestly and was satisfied with the salary she received at the gas station. Unfortunately, the young woman didn't know it yet, but Alfred Patterson had his eye on her for a long time and was just waiting for the opportune moment to get what he wanted. To achieve his goal, the unpleasant gas station owner used every excuse to get close to Jennifer, touching her hand, hugging her around the waist, and even making dirty jokes. Mr. Patterson, I'm sorry, but your jokes are making me uncomfortable, the young woman said, once again escaping the groping hands of the creepy man. You can try to avoid me all you want, but I'll get what I want. You didn't think you got this job for nothing, did you? Alfred said as he smoothed his hair. Sally and Rose overheard the conversation and laughed approvingly in response to the despicable man's comment. The two, who knew their boss's preference well and never resisted him, allowed themselves to be mistreated by their boss. Jennifer could barely hold back her tears, and it took considerable effort to pull herself together, unable to control her tears by the end of the workday. Finally, after closing, the girl took off her hated overalls and ran home. Passing some garbage cans, Jennifer heard a strange sound, so she stopped to look around. It seemed to come from a cardboard box in the alley. As she lifted the cover, she saw a tiny kitten underneath. How did you get there? She exclaimed and took the kitten into her arms. Knowing that the kitten would die quickly without shelter and food, Jennifer took him home and fed him milk. 
Then, admiring her new friend, she decided to name him Tom in homage to her favorite cartoon character. When Jennifer returned home from work, she was always greeted by a cuddly boy who loved his owner more than anything else. These moments made the girl's heart so light and happy that even Alfred's innocent harassments no longer seemed so bad. He didn't give Jennifer a minute of peace for about a month. And then, something happened that changed everything. The gas station's profits had been steadily decreasing over the past few months, which made Alfred furious. If this keeps up, I'll probably have to sell the gas station, so maybe you should start looking for new jobs, said the owner, referring mainly to his two favorite employees, Sally and Rose. Jennifer accidentally overheard that the potential buyer for the gas station was an older man who had made his fortune in the Alaskan gold mines. The young woman didn't care who the establishment's new owner would be since she was a good and honest employee. Such people can adapt to any boss or new working conditions more easily than others. But Sally and Rose were distraught, as they realized they might have to give up their illegal income schemes, which terrified them. One day, a beat-up Chevrolet pulled into the gas station around noon. The car was in such bad shape that it belonged in a landfill. A frail old man was sitting behind the wheel of this bucket of bolts. He was wearing beat-up clothes and a torn baseball cap. Here comes another beggar. He'll fill it up with a couple of gallons just so he can get home and that's it, Rose said sarcastically. But as it turned out, the old man had no money, not even for a few gallons of gas. Miss, could you help me please? The fact is, I left my wallet at home and I don't have enough gas to go back for it, the old man exclaimed, a little embarrassed, playing with the cap in his hands. I know you're kind. Does this look like a house of charity to you? I bet you beg for food on the streets, too. And then you come here and beg for gasoline? That's a great way to live life. Get out of here before I call the police, Sally replied rudely. Why would you do that? Asked the old man. I'm just asking for a loan. I need to get to the airport. My son's arriving today and I haven't seen him for many years. Here, I have a wedding ring. You can take it. I don't need it anymore, as I've been a widower for seven years. The older man started to take the ring off his finger. Seeing the situation, Jennifer felt sympathy for someone willing to humiliate himself for a few gallons of gas. Stop it, sir. I believe you and I'll help. I'll put in the gasoline you need. You don't need to give me a ring. Jennifer said as she unscrewed the gas cap from the older man's Chevrolet. Meanwhile, Sally and Rose exchanged a complicit look and quickly ran to the phone to report this to Alfred. Jennifer didn't even mind that she was reported to her boss by her co-workers. Instead, she filled the man's tank and wrote down the total amount to be taken out of her paycheck. But as soon as the old man left the gas station, the owner came running out, and his face was distorted with anger. Who do you think you are, Jennifer? You may have forgotten, but I still own this gas station. I still make the decisions here, and I won't allow anyone to give away free gas, Alfred began to shout. I understand, sir, but I made a note for that amount to come out of my paycheck, Jennifer replied softly. In response, the station owner simply pointed to the door. You are fired, he shouted. Jennifer wiped away a tear and gathered her things. The unfortunate orphan had not foreseen such a turn of events, and now she was unemployed, punished for her kindness. Can you imagine the surprise of the gas station employees when the Chevrolet returned about an hour later? Only now, a young man in a suit and sunglasses was driving, and the poor old man was sitting in the passenger seat. Jennifer was holding a few personal belongings and was about to leave when the old man came running towards her. Here's the money. My name is Henry Matthews, and that handsome man with the glasses is my son George, said the winded man. Thank you so much for your help. I would have been late picking up my son if it weren't for you. But thanks to you, I arrived on time. He has spent many years in Alaska and decided to come home, the old man exclaimed, holding out the money. Thank you very much. Jennifer replied with an embarrassed smile. But if you don't mind, give this money to the cashier because I no longer work in this establishment. I've just been fired. What do you mean fired? Who did that? They had no right. I already made the first payment for the purchase of the gas station, and according to the agreement, after paying the total amount, I'll become the rightful owner. Mr. Matthews, is that you? How are you? Alfred said timidly and began trying to justify himself. But George was angry and didn't want to hear it. So the businessman immediately called his accountant and instructed him to make the final transfer, thus paying the total value of the gas station and becoming the rightful owner of the spot. Then, George announced that he was now the owner of this gas station. Upon hearing his words, Jennifer's face lit up with a sweet smile, which made the orphan even more beautiful. Dejected, Alfred Patterson lowered his head and slowly walked back to his office for the last time.
He understood perfectly well that from now on, he would not be welcome at this gas station. A month flew by. Sally and Rose quickly learned the new rules and abandoned their illegal schemes, understanding that theft would no longer be tolerated. But Jennifer was the most surprised by the changes implemented by the new owner, as he put her in charge of his entire network of gas stations spread throughout the city. Touchingly, George's father often visits the young woman and won't let anyone but her fill up his old Chevrolet. The older gentleman treats Jennifer like a daughter and dreams that she'll start dating his son, George. She always turns bright red and smiles